Grand Theft Auto 4, it's one of the most anticipated games of the year, and this time in the bonus round, our expert panel explores what to expect from Rockstar's latest release. Will GTA 4 deliver what fans want to see? Something there will get people riled up, and that will only serve to help sell even more units of the game. And what does our panel think of the controversial drunk driving? I think it is a dopey idea. Find out in this sobering edition of the Bonus Round. Everybody, welcome to the bonus round. I'm Jeff Keeley, and in the bonus round, the biggest names in the video game industry get together to talk about the issues that matter most. And what we're talking about this time is the Grand Theft Auto series from Rockstar Games. Everyone's incredibly excited about the release of GTA 4 at the end of April. And I've got a special panel together to talk about the history of the series and what we can expect from GTA 4. Back again. Everyone online has asked for him. Michael Pachter, your triumphant return to the bonus round. We've missed you for a few months. I'm incredibly excited about GTA 4, so thanks for having me. Well, good to have you. Uh, another return guest, Pete Winnott, the executive producer from uh, NBC Universal and a uh, man also known for the Scarface game, which uh, took a few, uh, you know, ins a little bit of inspiration from GTA. Yeah, right? we ripped them off. Ripped them off. <laughs> He's willing to admit that. All right. And finally, we've got uh, Chris Morrill from uh, GamePro. Chris, uh, you're an editor there, and you've had some hands-on time with uh, GTA. Yeah, and we're uh, from GamePro. We're all really excited about what we saw. So one of the one of the few games this year that we're just like itching to itching to really just get into it. Well, let's talk about GTA 4 right now. We're going to talk about the history of the series and everything, but let's start out with GTA 4 because everyone is so excited about this game. Uh, Pactor, what are you expecting? Is this thing really going to deliver? Well, I, I, I need to give you a cautionary note that when GTA 3 came out, I had a 325,000 unit estimate. So <laughs> I only missed by about 20 million <laughs> units. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I think that the only uh, constraint on sales this year is going to be the install base of the 360 and the PS3. You know, we're probably looking at you know somewhere around 22 million, maybe 25 million Xbox 360s by the end of the year, right. and probably about half that many PS3s. So you know, the question is, what's the attach rate going to be? But yeah, I think I think this game is going to pretty easily sell nine or 10 million units by calendar year, and maybe a tad more. It's not going to sell 16 million. I don't think one right. out of two you know console owners is buying the game just because there's a lot of people that have a PS3 for Blu-ray. But yeah, it's exciting. Uh, you and I were talking off camera about what the biggest selling game is going to be this year, and you right. said you thought maybe Wii Fit. Wii Fit could pull Yeah, that I, I don't see Wii Fit selling. Revenue-wise, at least. Revenue-wise, for sure. But I don't see Wii Fit selling 10 million units. I don't really see right. any game selling 10 million. The other thing I think that's really interesting is games like Assassin's Creed that really weren't that big a game, you know, not that great a game, and certainly didn't have a history, sold 7 million units. You know, right. that, it, it's like... How does Assassin's Creed sell seven million and GTA doesn't sell you know right. five times that number? So I think GTA is a lock to sell nine or ten million. I think it could sell a tad more. That's pretty big. So Pete, you know, we're already talking about nine, ten million years for this game without people having even, you know, put their hands on the controller yet. I mean, is there any risk that this is going to disappoint and you know people won't buy it? Yeah, I really don't think so. I think if you go back to the, you know, the well, it's the first GTA, what GTA three. Right. Um, it really moved, you know, it basically, before that, the PS2 was just sort of a decent system. After, you know, GTA 3 came out, everybody went out and bought the PS2 because that's the system GTA 3 was on. And I think it, you know, exploded the number of units and then set itself up for a larger install base for the eventual sequels. And I think this game will do very much the same thing. I think uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of game they have on the PS3. But I think it could really help the PS3, uh, you know, start to move into a, a better critical mass in terms of number of units sold in. Now, Chris, you and I have both uh, had some hands-on time with GTA 4. Tell me your perspective. Did, does this game really deliver? I mean, is it everything that the GTA fan wants? I think I think it does. I think I don't think it's as big of a transition as we went from you know GTA 2 to GTA 3, but right. I think it's about as big as you can expect in this generation. I think in terms of graphics, I mean, every every firefight that we played and it before the game's released that we've been shown, it's like, it's epic, you know, it's, it's that feeling, it's, it, it, it draws you in, it's immersive, you know, uh, it's got a Gears of War cover system, so you're ducking, you're blind firing rockets, skipping off the ground, it, it's really impressive from so far, so I think, I think it's, it's a, 
about as big of, of just a, a move forward as we could expect for the series right now. Could it suffer though from what I call sort of the Halo 3 syndrome that you know a lot of people looked at Halo 3 and said, hey, it's you know it's Halo 2, but it's in high def, it's you know sort of the same game again, and they you know, they haven't really reinvented the wheel. Is there a risk you think with GTA 4 that it's going to be great and it's going to satisfy the fan base, but it's going to be overshadowed by something newer and fresher this year? 